Oh my god. So yes, tons of open world gaming goodness for you today. A lot of news to dive into. We've got a big surprise reveal at the upcoming PlayStation State of Play. We're going to be talking about a little game called God of War Ragnarok. Yes, it's likely we will be seeing first gameplay here very, very soon. Plus, we're going to be talking about yet again Ghost of Tsushima. This game is like huge. It's a very big franchise and it is apparently getting a director's cut, a big single player expansion. Oh, and oh yeah, it's also getting its own movie. So we're going to be talking about that. And what is Hideo Kojima up to? It looks like he's teaming up with Xbox, but what exactly are they working on? We have new teases about that. And guess what? Vin Diesel himself is teasing a brand new Reddit game. I kid you not. We're going to be getting a Reddit movie and most likely a Reddit game alongside this. So I am so hyped about that one. And yes, we're gonna be revisiting uh, Elder Scrolls. We're gonna be talking about Elder Scrolls 6 today, some news about that one. And this one right here gets me super excited. It's uh, IO Interactive's brand new open world RPG. You know, they made Hitman, but we're talking about their next big project, which is called Project Dragon. It's a new open world RPG, and I cannot wait for this one. So let's talk about it. Hey everyone, what's happening? Open World Games here. Hope you're doing good. And let's start off by talking about this big surprise here for the rumored PlayStation State of Play. Again, this is supposedly gonna be coming up here on July 8th. It's gonna be an 80 to 90 minute show with PlayStation. And the rumor also is that we will be getting brand new God of War Ragnarok gameplay during this PlayStation event. So that is really cool. I really hope that pans out to be true because let me tell you what, I love what they have done with the God of War franchise. Um, and how they have actually built the world and how you explore this open world. It's not like too big and overwhelming. So I hope they actually do the same thing here with Ragnarok and kind of keep it the same size and are able to pull off an intimate story alongside that. So that would be really, really cool to see for sure. Uh, now, what else is PlayStation up to? So yes, they just announced that they have acquired some studios. Uh, they acquired House Marquee, but also accidentally leaked that they are going to be acquiring uh, Blue Point Studios. And it's a big deal. This is actually a very big deal when it comes to Blue Point Studios because they are the experts at the remaster. They brought us Demon Souls for PS5, Shadow of the Colossus, Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection. What's next? So, you know, you know, there's rumors that we would be seeing, of course, uh, Metal Gear Solid remastered, and that could actually end up at PlayStation uh, State of Play as well. That would be such a huge surprise. If that's the big surprise, I'm gonna be so hyped and excited. But you know, Ghost of Tsushima is also getting some news as of lately. Uh, I didn't expect to hear about this game in the news so much. I was expecting just to hear about Ghost of Tsushima 2 in a couple of years, but yeah, we're gonna be getting a director's cut. Apparently this was uh, rated by the ESRB. That is most likely going to be shown off here in the next, I would say week or two weeks. And it looks like we're gonna be getting a big single player expansion alongside that. And they might be expanding upon the Legends multiplayer mode as well. We'll see uh, if that pans out to be true. Now on the side of Microsoft, you're probably asking yourself, what is Microsoft doing to counter punch what Sony is doing? Cause it's like a big console war going on between Sony and Microsoft for sure. Uh, but it looks like Microsoft is making some dealings here with Hideo Kojima. Uh, check it out, it says Grub says Microsoft's deal with Kojima is now close. He basically said they are figuring out the details and it's coming to a point where it's not gonna not get signed. Uh, so this is really big. They're apparently working on some sort of cloud-based um, movie experience with Hideo Kojima as highlighted in this article right here. It says, Hideo Kojima's Xbox project might be an interactive cloud film game. Hideo Kojima is reportedly making a first of its kind cloud game for Xbox as Microsoft doubles down on its Project X Cloud service. And the X Cloud service is actually really interesting and it sounds really neat. Uh, you know, with uh, how they are really promoting cloud-based gaming, which means you can basically play next-gen games on any platform. They're also allowing you to play basically Xbox Series X games by streaming through X, X Cloud on 
your Xbox One. So they're doing a lot of interesting stuff for sure. Now let's talk about what Vin Diesel is up to. Uh, so he has had some recent comments about the Reddick universe. Uh, it goes on to say this, Vin Diesel mentions possible new Reddick video game. Fast and Furious actor Vin Diesel gives an update about the latest Reddick film as well as the possibility of a new Reddick video game. So you guys, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have played uh, the Reddick uh, games and have watched the Reddick movies. I myself love this universe and would love to see personally an open world style game even if it's like the size of metro exodus that would be really cool now they go on to say this in a recent interview with games radar plus regarding the latest fast film f9 the actor provided an update about a fourth reddick movie as well as the potential for another reddick video game diesel says that franchise director and longtime collaborator david towie uh, already has a great script written but that's that it's just a matter of time as to when an opportunity to film it will actually arise. The movie star goes on to acknowledge the franchise's successful video game entries, theorizing that the impending fourth film installment would once again come with a game that ties into its events. I imagine we would take advantage of the gaming space and add an extra chapter. Dang, that would be awesome. That gets me hyped. Can you imagine what a next-gen ready game would look like? Sound off what you would expect uh, from this game in the comments down below. Now, we got to talk about this one, of course. Uh, I am super hyped uh, to see what Bethesda does with Elder Scrolls. Of course, they're working on Starfield right now, but Elder Scrolls is where it is for me. You know, Skyrim, I love Skyrim, one of my favorite all-time open-world RPG games. Now it says, says this right here, the Elder Scrolls 6 is still in the design phase, Todd Howard says, the wait continues. So the article further uh, goes on to quote Todd Howard. Let's get into the actual quotes here, shall we? So it says this right here, it's good to think of the Elder Scrolls 6 as still being in the design phase, but we're checking the tech is this going to handle the things we want to do in that game? Every game will have some new suites of technology, so Elder Scrolls 6 will have some additions to the Creation Engine 2 that the game is going to require. So this sounds like they're gonna be pushing the envelope for their technology even beyond what they are doing with Starfield right now. now. Uh, and also, they're probably learning a lot from Starfield as well and taking that uh, knowledge and placing it into Elder Scrolls 6. So that's probably what they're looking at and what they're really committed to doing because they want, of course, Elder Scrolls 6 to probably be absolutely huge uh, as well. Now, also, they had some comments about Starfield. They go on to say this, that Bethesda hints at a length of a very big Starfield. This game is going to be no joke at all. They do want it to be like in line with uh, Skyrim and Fallout and recognized in that way. Uh, now, they go on to say this. They say, I don't want to set any crazy expectations for that. You know, we have cities and we build them like we built the cities we've built before, said Howard when asked about the game's approach on cities. We have lots of locations that we're building like we've built before, and we want the experience of you exploring those to be, you know, as rewarding as we've done before. There are some different spins on that given the subject matter, but we like that about games. We want to point in a direction and walk and have our curiosity be piqued and hopefully rewarded. Howard continued noting the game will be very big. And he says this, people are still playing Skyrim and we have learned from that. We spent more time building Starfield to be played for a long time if you so cho choose that you just want to keep playing it. It's got some more hooks in it for that that we added later to a game like Skyrim while we're still, make, uh, while we're still making sure that somebody who just wants to play and go through the main quest and win or feel they've accomplished something larger is doable. So, you know, they go on to basically say that's not going to be too overwhelming that you can still streamline it and experience a story, which is always really important if you're short on time, you know, if you're working, <laughs> if you're stuck at college, whatever, you still wanna enjoy the main story, but at the same time, it's gonna have that scope of Skyrim, uh, which is really, really important for, you know, Bethesda fans. Now, also what's really interesting to me, mentioning open world RPGs is IO Interactive, they're getting into the game. You know, they've been, uh, 
uh, really good with their Hitman franchise lately. And this is the recent news about Project Dragon, their big open world RPG game. It says this, Project Dragon by IO Interactive will be a 10 year game. It says earlier in the year, Jez Corden of Windows Central said that Microsoft and IO Interactive were in talks for a new dragon themed fantasy RPG dubbed Project Dragon. While it's too early to share any sort of gameplay details, the final product may look widely different than the initial pitch, but what's on paper thus far sounds incredibly ambitious and represents a completely new direction for IO. Now today, Jess spoke again on Xbox Era Podcast saying that he believes Project Dragon is going to be a game that gets the content and updates for at least 10 years. So this sounds like it could be also a live service type game. Now it says Project Dragon will be a AAA role playing game with an ambitious connected world different from the Hitman series and upcoming Project 007 game IO is working on. Furthermore, as the codename gives it away, dragons will be ruling the large medieval like world. So it does sound like to me it's open world. Uh, or in some way hub worlds or something that are connected, perhaps like Dark Souls, we'll see. Now they say IO Interactive also announced a new studio earlier this year in Barcelona, which would be presumably working on Project Dragon, separate from their other studios in Cop Copenhagen and Malmo, working on Hitman and Project 007. So in other words, IO Interactive, they're really busy right now big time uh obviously my god they are working hard on a lot of different projects i hope it pans out but what they have done so far with the hitman franchise and coming back from uh you know the kane lynch uh situation yeah they've uh, had some really good hits on their hands so yeah we'll see what they can do i hope they can uh make an awesome open world rpg now let's talk about assassin's creed so get this, Assassin's Creed Valhalla director joins EA Motive working on an unannounced game. A lot of rumblings out of EA Motive lately. Now, what we do know about EA Motive is that they are also really focused on like an open world game, but also they have mobile interests that they might be wanting to work on something. This is my opinion, of course, speculation based on what we know about EA Motive and the direction that they're taking with leadership. Uh, I would think they would want to make something that can possibly compete against Genshin Impact, free to play space. A lot of companies are focusing on free to play stuff right now. It's going to be interesting to see if that happens at EA Motive or not. We will have to wait and find out. Or they could take the direction and uh, hyper focus on competing against GTA because EA, they have always, always gone on record saying that they really want something that can uh, be their GTA uh, or like a GTA killer, so to speak. But anyway, uh, let's keep going. Let's talk about the Far Cry games. Of course, we've got Far Cry 6 coming up, but guess what? We're not talking about Far Cry 6. We're talking about Far Cry 7, believe it or not, because we have some recent quotes from Jason Schreier about this one. Jason Schreier says, Far Cry 7 is going on a completely different direction. It says, in a recent episode of the Triple Click podcast, notable video game reported reporter Jason Schreier briefly talked about the Far Cry series, most notably with Far Cry 6 and its appearance at E3 2021. In doing so, Schreier stated that he has heard some brief murmurs about where Ubisoft would be looking to take things in the future and noted the next game in the franchise could be much more unique. He says this, from what I have heard, if I remember correctly, they're aiming to go in a radically different direction for Far Cry after Far Cry 6. And you know what? I would not be surprised if this ended up being true. And honestly, I expected Ubisoft to do something radically different with this uh, game franchise a lot sooner given their server surveys, excuse me, that they release every single uh, year to Far Cry fans. Check this out right here. It goes on to say this in the survey. They asked uh, gamers if they would like to see a Far Cry game in remote Alaska about surviving an extreme wilderness, a Far Cry game in a futuristic sci-fi setting on another planet, a Far Cry game set in Vietnam. What about the jungles of Peru? What about Mad Max style post-apocalyptic world? And they also talked about a Far Cry game based on the world of Shangri-La from Far Cry 4. So a lot of options there. And I have even heard of, you know, rumors that they would want to experiment with dinosaurs. Uh, and the thing about that is uh, that is completely undersaturate, undersaturated, excuse me, in my opinion, is there's no open world dinosaur games, no like Jurassic Park, Jurassic World type games. And 
except for Horizon Zero Dawn uh, and Horizon Forbidden West. Now, they uh, have, of course, really succeeded in that regard. But I mean, a traditional type dinosaur experience that's like third person or first person, that's kind of missing in action. So let me know what you would like to see from the Far Cry universe. How wacky should they get with it? And mentioning Horizon Zero Dawn and Forbidden West, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Guerrilla Games and what they're up to. Check this out. It says, the unannounced game from Guerrilla Games is alive and developing perfectly. It says, Simon Laresh at one time, he was one of the leaders who made the Killzone 2 multiplayer memorable. He also worked on Splinter Cell Blacklist, Watch Dogs 2, and he was the game director of Rainbow Six Siege. He has been working on he has been working, excuse me, at Guerrilla Games for three and a half years working on this new game, but only now has commented on something for the first time. I would like to confirm I am indeed working on a game with awesome people that makes incredible things happen and fun to play. Uh, and he actually says this out on uh, Twitter as well. If you would like to see the actual Twitter post right here, uh, we can confirm that this is actually him, game director at Gorilla, worked on Watch Dogs 2 Rainbow Six Siege. So he has a lot of experience uh, in the realm of multiplayer games as well as open world games and some Star Wars experience on top of everything else there. So that's very interesting. We'll see what he's working on. There's a lot of rumors out of Guerrilla Games that they're also working on a new Sockham game as well, which I would love that. I used to play that type of game on, I think it was PlayStation 3 when that was released. Uh, but yeah, that would be really cool to see. Uh, now, also, let's talk about the Metro exodus developer because they are getting busy they have multiple projects in the work and let me tell you what this is one of my favorite studios right now they're more quiet but what they make is absolutely incredible and i feel like they don't get enough attention so we're going to be talking about 4a games metro developer is working on a brand new ip and you can go to their website and see that they are getting busy they go on to say this on their website that uh, they are hiring for multiple projects the text is text is so small there <laughs> hopefully you can see it but yeah they have tons of job listings right here um, for something some sort of mysterious project what we do know is it looks like they want to expand uh, the metro um, universe, I guess you would say, the franchise that they've already created. Metro 4A has been bought out and is working on a new IP, Metro Multiplayer as well. So they are uh, going to be bringing us apparently something related to multiplayer in this universe, which I hope they... <sighs> I hope they just hyper focus on what they built already because I love the Metro Exodus single player experience. I'm just gonna say, but at the same time, I am kind of curious about what they are working uh, with with this new um, multiplayer game. But apparently, yep, they're working on multiple stuff uh, within the Metro universe and beyond. And in other news, PlayStation, they have acquired House Marquee as well, developer of Returnal, Super Stardust, and Dead Nation are, are their newest member of the PlayStation Studios. So that's really cool. Everything that they make is apparently going to be exclusive to the PlayStation. Returnal was a very big success for them. High praise. I, I want to try Returnal. I've never had the chance to try it. Um, but yeah, I've got to hop on that one for sure. But stay tuned for more open world gaming goodness. That does it for this one. Let me know, of course, what you guys make of all of this news, including the Reddick news. What would you guys like to see from the uh, upcoming PlayStation State of Play? I really do hope we get to see something related to uh, God of War, Ragnarok, and maybe some teases to what uh, they're doing with the acquired studios in terms of remasters. It would be really, really cool if we did end up seeing a Metal Gear Solid remaster announcement here very soon, because that studio also did actually work on some remasters for Metal Gear. But yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more, and I will see you all next time. Take care.